Welcome back to my channel, and another true Welsh murder case. Today I am covering the case of the callous murder of 39-year-old David Wynne, by a perfume thief in 2017 in Swansea. Before I begin, I would like to say that I mean no offence or upset to anyone involved in this case. This video is for educational purposes, and all the information I am using has come from several sources. I have put all of this together into one video. David Wynne, aged 39 was a father to four young children and is described by his family as a hard-working, loving father. On the 23rd of December 2017, he was on his work's Christmas party in the centre of Swansea. After the party had finished he began walking up the city's high street as he intended to get a taxi back to his home in Gendros. En route he decided that he was going to get something to eat, and so he stopped at one of the takeaways on the street. Kyle Dunbar aged 29 at the time of the incident is from the Forest Vark area in Swansea. He was a well-known thief in the Swansea area, and was also known as having a drug habit, particularly MDMA, also known as ecstasy and cocaine. On the day of the murder, he had gone on a shoplifting spree, in order to get money to fund his drug habit for that day. He entered the large boots store in the Quadrant shopping center, and headed towards the perfume section. He thought that perfume would be very easy to sell, and that he could get quite a high price, particularly as it was two days before Christmas. As the majority of the perfume bottles were either locked in a cabinet, or had security tags on them, he decided to open the boxed gift sets that were out on display, and steal the perfume bottles from inside, as they did not have security tags on them. He then quickly left the store. CCTV and witnesses say, that he spent the majority of the evening approaching the public on the streets of Swansea, in an attempt to get him to buy the bottles of perfume from him. Witnesses described his demeanor and tactics to be very intimidating and persistent, and when they had refused to buy the perfume, he had become quite abusive towards them. His face had several cuts and wounds on it, and he was quite a scary-looking individual. As the night went on, there became less and less people that he could approach and he was becoming desperate. He then started walking towards High Street, which is where David was. After David had got his food, he left the takeaway near the Volcano Theater, and this is where he first bumped into Dunbar. Dunbar approached David in a similar manner he had other people, attempting to sell him the bottles of perfume. David politely declined, but Dunbar persisted, and started following him. David then told him several times to go away and leave me alone. Dunbar was not happy at this and then became aggressive, demanding, and physically violent, leading to an altercation between the men. David, then continued his journey up High Street towards the station cab's taxi office located towards the top of the road. When he arrived, David entered the taxi office and ordered a cab, but there was a short wait until one was available. He then stepped outside, and noticed that Dunbar had followed him up High Street and was heading straight towards him. CCTV from the taxi office had shown evidence that he had run in his direction. Dunbar confronted David, and another altercation took place between them, during which Dunbar threw a perfume bottle at him, which then smashed on the floor near David's feet. David retreated to the taxi office for safety, whilst Dunbar had been seen running down a lane near to Ebenezer Street, thinking that Dunbar had gone, David stepped back outside. Dunbar was angry and decided that was not the end of the matter. He returned from the lane just over a minute later at around 8.40pm with a glass bottle, which he had smashed so it was left with a jagged neck. He then put the hood up on his jacket, walked up to David, who was standing outside the office, and deliberately stabbed him in the neck, before running back down the lane and away from the scene. Staff from the taxi office immediately ran out to help David. They called the emergency services and then attempted to stop the bleeding by using a towel and cushion, pressing it firmly against his neck. Witnesses said that David knew he was fatally injured and said to them, I know what is going to happen. I'm going to die. Armed police officers arrived at the scene shortly before the ambulance arrived, but by this time David had already lost three liters of blood and was still bleeding out. He was put into the ambulance to be taken to Morriston Hospital. In the ambulance en route he suffered a cardiac arrest, but paramedics managed to resuscitate him. On arrival at the hospital he was immediately taken for surgery, undergoing several operations to save his life. Following this he spent days in the intensive care unit. 
Because he had lost so much blood, he had suffered catastrophic brain and organ damage which was irreversible. Doctors continued to try to save his life, but three days later on Boxing Day, they decided there was nothing more that they could do, and so they decided to turn his life support off and David died on Boxing Day. His wife was now a widow, and his four children had lost their loving father. Police remained at the scene and began interviewing possible witnesses. Several witnesses had reported that Dunbar's behavior was agitated, anxious and self-pitying, and he claimed that David had been bullying him. CCTV and witnesses' evidence revealed that later on that evening, Dunbar had explained to two men how he had carried out the attack, and then demonstrated using a lighter as a prop, how he had stabbed David in the neck. He also showed him that he had a cut on his hand from the bottle, and was still covered in blood. Now police had identified the suspect, they set out to find him. Later that evening, at around 4.45 am, a police officer who was on patrol saw Dunbar standing on a pavement several miles away in Morriston, under the influence of alcohol and having taken four Valium tablets. The officer checked his hands and found a 2 cm wide cut, which matched reports from the witnesses. When the officer asked him how he sustained the injury, Dunbar told him that he had cut himself from punching a window at his home, trying to gain access. The officer then explained to Dunbar that he had been captured on camera at the scene of the attack in High Street. Dunbar reportedly said, I can't believe it. Christmas Eve, I should have stayed in. He was immediately arrested and placed into the back of the police car, where he allegedly fell asleep. When he was later interviewed by police, and confronted with the evidence, he admitted to stabbing David. At this point, as David was still alive, police charged Dunbar with attempted murder. He was held in custody awaiting presentation at court, but during this time David had passed away. The attempted murder charge was revoked, and Dunbar was charged with murder. Dunbar was taken to Swansea Magistrates Court on 26 December 2017. He plead guilty to attempted murder but not to murder. Because of the seriousness of the offence, it was outside their sentencing powers, and so magistrates transferred the case to Swansea Crown Court, and Dunbar was remanded in custody. Dunbar was to stand trial for murder on 21 May 2018, but when he appeared he changed his plea to guilty and therefore the trial was no longer needed. The prosecution described the act as a sick and cowardly attack. David's wife gave an impact statement to Swansea Crown Court in which she said that David's son did not want it to be Christmas again, and how his daughter cries herself to sleep at night. In sentencing, Judge Paul Thomas QC expressed that an aggravating factor was the fact that David was aware that he was going to die. Dunbar was sentenced to life in prison, and ordered to serve a minimum of 20 years. He appealed against his conviction, asking it to be reduced to manslaughter. At Swansea Crown Court, three appeal court judges agreed with the original sentence. Lord Burnett added that the evidence indicated that Dunbar had intended to kill his victim by targeting his neck. He also highlighted the profound impact David's murder had on his family. His appeal was refused and the sentence of 20 years remained. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and if you like true crime stories, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I upload new content. Thanks for watching.